Hi students, Mrs. Weaver here, fifth grade language arts teacher at the intermediate school. I know for some of you, this is the first video you're seeing on home instruction. Um, those kiddos should be in Miss Dennis's homeroom and Miss Watkins' homeroom. So if you haven't met me yet, my name is Mrs. Weaver. I teach fifth grade language arts. I'm kind of hidden in the school, so you may not have seen me yet. I'm going to be reading to you Rainforest Food Chains for three lessons. So let's go ahead and get started. Your Cornell note questions. So go ahead and grab a piece of paper. If you don't have access to these on Google Classroom, write down the questions just like you would do in class. If you do have access to Google Classroom, open this document. That way you have it up and ready to go as I read it out loud to you. So when we read pages four through 11, you're gonna answer number one, explain the ways producers, consumers, and decomposers get their food. Use page six, hint, hint. Number two, use details from page eight through nine to explain the relationship between habitat and the organisms that live there. Number three, look at the map on page 10 and 11. What do you notice about the location of rainforests? How does the placement of the rainforests on the map support the information provided on page eight? And then you're going to write a summary. Remember, your summary needs to be five to eight complete sentences about big details from the text. You need to make sure you have proper capitalization, punctuation. And when you're answering your Cornell note questions, one, two, and three, you need to make sure you're turning the question around using race. Restate, answer, cite, explain just like you've been doing in class all year. So let's go ahead and get started on our story. If you don't wanna to listen to me reading, that's okay. Pearson Easy Bridge is accessible on your slide or on your Google Drive by clicking the waffle, scrolling down until you see the Easy Bridge right here. Chances are your teacher already posted this information on Google Classroom, so make sure you go there and look. All right, Rainforest Food Chains. You guys should have probably already learned some of this information in science class. I believe there was a whole entire project you did on it, so this should just be a nice refresher. You probably already know most of this stuff, so just follow along, fill out your Cornell notes as we go along. All right, so what is a rainforest food chain? The warm, moist Amazon River Basin is home to the world's largest rainforest, part of the dense vegetation, plant life, and take a peek. Thousands of different plants and animals live here, between the damp ground and the treetops. On the forest floor, a millipede munches a leaf. Soon, a furry brown wolf spider inches closer. It traps the millipede and gobbles it up. Suddenly, a brightly colored toucan leaves a treetop perch. Toucans mostly eat berries and seeds, but today it spies the wolf spider and glides down towards it. The toucan snatches the spider in its beak and swallows it whole. When the toucan dies, decomposers such as bacteria will break down its body. Decomposers break down dead plant and animal material. This releases energy back into the water and soil. Soon other living things will take in that energy and the producers will begin again, or the process will begin again. Here is an orangutan. It crouches in the dense rainforest vegetation. All right, so this is the food chain. This process is called a food chain. A food chain shows how energy moves from one organism to another. An organism is any living thing. Energy moves from one living thing to another when one organism feeds on another. Sometimes this process is shown using a food chain diagram. A food chain diagram has a series of arrows. The arrows show the flow of energy. Energy flows 
from the food to the animal that eats it. For example, in the rainforest food chain to the left, the arrows lead from the figs to the sloth. Here's the fig, here's the sloth. From the sloth to the jaguar, and so on. Each link in a food chain is important. When something happens to one leak, it affects the entire chain. Although humans have done much to harm rainforest food chains, they depend on them too. It is important that humans start working to protect Earth's rainforests. And it just says right here, this food chain diagram shows how energy moves from one organism to another. All right, what are the parts of a food chain? So we have producers. Producers are plants. Plants use light energy from the sun to produce food. A consumer cannot make its own food. Consumers eat plants, animals, or both. There are three types of consumer. A primary consumer, or a herbivore, eats only plants. Carnivores eat only animals. Omnivores eat both plants and animals. Carnivores and omnivores are also called secondary consumers. Decomposers help release energy for producers. This frees up energy for the food chain process to continue. Decomposers feed on material that is decaying or breaking down. You may have heard the term predator and prey. A predator is an animal that eats another animal. The prey is the animal that is eaten. Food chains include both predators and prey. Can an animal be both predator and prey? Yes. An animal might have two different roles in a food chain. Sometimes it might be a predator and eat small animals. But it might become prey when an animal higher on the food chain eats it. One animal can have a place in several food chains. So that means in one food chain it may eat this and then be eaten by a specific animal. And then in a different food chain it might eat something different and be eaten by something different. So there's lots of different parts of the food chain. Energy in this food chain begins with a producer, the fig, and ends with the decomposer, the bacteria. This is a food web. So here it is. I'm gonna zoom out and go down. Food chains only tell one part of the story. They show one series of links. Many organisms eat more than one type of organism. This is a good idea for survival. Animals that eat only one thing are at risk if something happens to their food source. A food web shows how food chains are linked together. It looks a bit like a spider web. A food web shows how energy moves from organism to organism. It tells you who eats whom. In the food web above, Figs are food for both tappers and macaws. And this is the tapper. If you've never heard of it before, like me, that's what it looks like. This is the food web. All right. What is a rainforest habitat? Rainforests are warm areas of dense vegetation vegetation and heavy rain. The hot, moist conditions support many different species, types, of plants and animals. You can find rainforests in tropical areas all over the world. The largest rainforests are in South America around the Amazon River, in Africa around the Congo and Niger rivers, and in India in Southeast Asia. Australia, the Philippines, and Papua New Guinea have also have smaller rainforests. The rainforest is an amazing place to live. It is very warm all year long. The temperature usually stays between 20 degrees Celsius, 
which is 68 degrees Fahrenheit, and 32 degrees Celsius, or 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Within each rainforest are many different habitats. A habitat is a place where organisms of the same kind live. Organisms depend on their habitats for food, shelter, water, and everything else they need to survive. This is the Torup National Rainforest in Cameroon. It sustains a wide variety of organisms. So it just gives you a view of it. How much rain do they receive in the rainforest? Between 150 centimeters or 60 inches and 1,000 centimeters 390 inches of rainfall in rainforest every year. That's a lot of rain. That is, let's see. So here I have a ruler. It's 12 inches. That is a lot of rain. If they're getting the high end of it. If they're getting the low end of it, it's only about five. Yeah. Five of these. But if they're getting 390 inches, well, 390 divided by 12, tell me what it is in the comments. All right, here is a red and a blue macaw. They rest on the branch of a rainforest tree. The top layer of the rainforest is called the canopy. It is a dense group of treetops forming a blanket of leaves. Sometimes the canopy is so dense that it does not allow sunlight to get through. Below the canopy, the understory, is alive with climbing animals, tangling vines, and flowering orchids. On the forest floor, deer graze, army ants march, and ferns and mosses grow. All living things are adapted to their habitat. If a plant lives in the canopy and needs lots of sunlight, then it, it is adapted to the canopy. It likely would not survive on the forest floor. Over time, organisms develop adaptations that help them survive in certain habitats. Where, is the rain, where in the world are the rainforest habitats? The map below shows the location of the World rainforest. So we live here in North America. Ohio's right here. So here we have the Central American rainforest all the way down here. The Amazon rainforest. We have the Southeastern Asia rainforest. Australian rainforest. Indian rainforest, and the African rainforest. And remember, we have the ocean in between the two of them, if you're looking at a globe. I think I may be able to, no, I guess not. Usually you can do two pages. So if you had two pages, North America would be on the left, Europe, Asia, Australia, Africa would be on the right. So I know for your Cornell notes, there's a question that asks about page 10 and 11. You're going to have to flip back and forth. Speaking of that, we're done with our reading for today. So I'm going to bring up your Cornell note questions for you. Go ahead. Pause the video. Go back, rewatch, fast forward, whatever you need to do so that you can see the questions and get the answers that you need. If you have any questions, make sure that you email your teacher, write to them on Class Dojo, write to them on Google Classroom, or you can try and leave a comment here and I will try and reply back to you. I am not the most handy person with YouTube, so I can't make any promises, but I'll try and get to you as best as I can. I hope you have a wonderful day. We hope to see you again soon. I know all of us miss you at the intermediate school. So have a great day. Go Tigers. Bye.